What we're looking at here is a painting that I made recently, and I think it serves as a great opportunity to talk about reference. In today's video, I'm just going to assume that you're not in the category that just says reference is cheating. If you use reference, you're a bad artist, because in a number of other videos, I've already explained why that is definitely not true. But you still might be wondering, well, how does an image like this one come to be? Where does the reference fit into the whole process? Well, for me, it's not just one thing. I think it's easy to think about reference as essentially a photo that you find on the internet that's perfect. And really, your illustration is then just sort of copying that photo. Well, that's really not the case at all. You'll never find something that's 100% correct. So instead, what you're doing is you're collecting a variety of things, each of which represents one facet or one aspect of your illustration. And so before I really even got drawing, I had a prompt in mind. I knew I was going to be doing this laboratory hallway. And so I started collecting stuff that fit. You know, I was even just watching a movie on Netflix, as you can see here by this little red bar, and I saw this shot. And I thought, oh, look at that. That's great. And what I liked about it was the color. I thought it was kind of a nice, creepy blue temperature that you'll see in my illustration. And I also liked how the lab equipment is steel and glass, but at a glance, it all kind of matches. It has this very uniform feeling. So this was actually the first piece of reference that really got the ball rolling. And then I just began to look around online for other either directly or indirectly related ideas. Now, if we look at this tunnel here, you might think, well, this doesn't really look like a laboratory at all. But what I liked about this was the cleanness. It's lots of vertical lines and this sort of sweeping curve. And really, it's pretty minimal. And that's because architecturally, this is a driving tunnel. You don't actually need much stuff in here. But I thought this rhythm and clean repetition just had kind of a nice quality to it. And then I especially like the way that these surfaces are a little bit bent and a little bit uneven, but they're really shiny. So what you get is really mathematical architecture that's then kind of broken up because of this single reflection. The reflection provides the interest even though the architecture itself is, you know, pretty straightforward, pretty basic. And then some of these are much more practical. You know, I knew I was going to have like a security door or a keypad. So I got a picture of a door or I knew I wanted to have a lab that had machinery in it that was kind of lab equipment. And I don't really know what that looks like. So I found a well-lit, very instructive photo of just lab equipment. And you start to piece these things together. So the next step for me was just to render out a very basic layout. This is kind of the size and shape, but has no design details. And on top of this, I just did thumbnails. So here were a variety of different takes on the thing I was imagining. Because the fact is, I don't really imagine very well. It's, I think, easy to assume that artists have this photographic memory and they're kind of picturing these fully formed paintings. I don't really work that way. So I was taking some of the components from the reference I was using, and I was trying out different architectural details and different types of lighting and playing with shapes. But really, there's not a lot of details here. This is still the exploratory phase. But then this one here is what I like the most. And you can see this is kind of a midway point between some of the clean lines of actual labs, but also that same sort of architectural feel of the driving tunnel. It's very grid-like, very clean and angular, and really very minimal. And then when it came to making my final illustration, you can see I just refined on that idea. The basic skeleton happened in my thumbnail, but then all the little details of how is the real world actually fit together, you know, what does a trim look like? What does a security door look like? That all came from reference. So once again, I go back to the internet and I'm looking in Google image search and I'm finding a bit here and a bit there to fill in the gaps in my mental model. Because if you rely too much on what you remember, you'll end up with a caricature or sort of a simplest, most basic drawing. When in reality, it's real world details, even for sci-fi or fantasy, that are going to make it seem believable. And they don't even need to be directly related. You know, think back to that tunnel image. There is nothing at face value that says this is a science lab. But then when we come back to my painting here, you can see it's in the way I've done the reflections here and in the just general sense of paneling and even in the proportions, there's sort of a sense of that reference 
not a direct copy. And really, I think that's the takeaway here. What you're doing when you're collecting reference is you are finding little moments or little interesting aspects of things, not fully formed, but just one little tool to use in your next painting. Or if you're in the middle of a painting and you're having trouble just making it to that next level, then you go back to find new reference and you look for, you know, an interesting little bit of set dressing or maybe an interesting color palette. And then you synthesize all those different ideas from different sources together into your final painting. So get out there and look for reference and be willing to look in unusual places. Have fun.